So I come down here this morning. I got a log I was going to saw. And I thought I'd go ahead and check the oil and clean my air filter on this Duramax engine on my sawmill here. <laughs> and uh, it's very, I'm very disappointed in myself and I'm very shocked at what I see here. So I'm going to get the camera up here and I'm going to show you what I found. And uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So if you look down into the intake manifold right here, you'll see all this sawdust. And it's like, how could the sawdust get in there? And you look at the air filter, and the air filter's clean. So how did all of that sawdust get down inside where the clean air is supposed to be? Well, here, I'll show you how. So you look at this, and you'll see around this outside edge right here where them two pieces have gotten warped from heat I guess when that went down on there them two little screws hold it down and I'm, I'm thinking that it warped but also if you notice it clear up in this neck here it's like that the uh, air filter didn't seal up well there's no seal on the bottom of the air filter and there's no seal on this so I guess that sawdust was just crawling up underneath of there I guess I don't know but man oh man so I found an old Honda this this Duramax engine was it was a cheap engine the fuel tank fell off the thing I started looking online to see if I could find some parts for it I couldn't find any parts for it anywhere so I had a couple of old Hondas laying around here and I thought you know what let's see if the Honda tank it looks the same let's see if it'll fit on there so I unbolted it Honda tank fits right on there <laughs> what's the chances of that huh well now I went to that same engine out there now this one's made all in one piece and it's a air intake with the air filter but it's going to fit right on here the way this is made. So I'm going to take and eliminate all of that junk and throw it away and put on my uh, my new air filter. And uh, I think we'll be fine. So this is my homemade saw. And I've had quite a few problems with it. I'm not real proud of it. I've had quite a few problems with it. Bearings going out. A lot of different things. But... The one thing I am proud of is I self-propelled it and how it works. And it really does a fine job. So I put an alternator on my drive belt that drives my pulley. I took a tarp motor. And I took this tarp motor and I mounted it on here. And I built a, an outboard drive with a bearing and a sprocket and an idler sprocket. So I got an idler sprocket on each side and it does really well. I put a number 40 chain on it from one end to the other. So if you come down here on this end, I'll show you. I've got a spring on the end of it with a wing nut and a tensioner that I built so that it always has a little bit of slack in it so it keeps the chain taut but yet it'll try to pull itself and then the chain goes all the way down to the other end laying on top of my table adjustments so that it doesn't uh, lay in the dirt but I got the same thing down here on this end so you can take and tighten up that tension on that chain a little bit but as it as it comes and propels itself down the track it just pulls itself on that chain and it's cushioned as it goes so it really works pretty well I use those V-groove pulleys 
I put little cleaners in front of them to keep the sawdust out from getting in front or a chunk of log so that as you're traveling along, if, if something was to get on your track here, it would bump it off. That was my plan anyhow. The one thing I didn't do right, which I got to go back and change, was this is a tarp motor off of a truck. And I'll show you in a minute, I'm powering it with a PWM, but this tarp motor, I've got it standing straight up and down. It should have been laying with this motor laying down on the bottom because this bearing right in here has gone out twice because it's not getting any oil out of this gearbox. So what I did the last time was I filled the gearbox completely full of oil all the way to the top so that this bottom bearing is getting oil all the time. But it really needs to be modified and turned if this bracket was slid back just a little ways farther I could have laid that motor down on its side and I wouldn't have had that problem so something to think about if you're going to build you one or if you're going to self propel your saw uh, make sure you lay that motor down so that this bearing inside this housing gets plenty of oil and then of course this is a greasable bearing and these are sealed idlers and I use a PWM to power it. The first PWM I put on it, there's my PWM, the first PWM I put on it was a 50 watt, or 50 amp, I'm sorry, 50 amp. And it lasted for about a week and it burned up. I put on a 100 amp and it lasted for about two months and I burned it up. Now this one here is a Panologic 150 amp. It's going to cost you a little bit of money. I think it was 200 and something dollars for this one. But uh, it has not given up on me yet. It's just a really, a really good rig. I put a fuse in a fuse holder right here. And I take it out every time I get done using it. And that's the, the powers my PWM. You can see the lights on. And this is my forward and reverse switch. And this rheostat is my speed so the farther you turn it the faster it'll go the slower you turn it the slower it'll go you want to change directions you go back forward and it stays pretty constant whatever speed that you're happy with as far as what loads on that engine it does real well so I'll let you look at it down here traveling once. Go back forward. It does a fine job for uh, for sawing logs. It really does. It sure beats having to stand back here and grab a hold of this thing and push it. I started out with that and I thought, you know what, we're going to modify this and we're going to get rid of that problem. So, i show you here, we, we took and we mounted, a, this is a Motorola alternator that I think it came off of a reefer unit that I had laying around here. And we put it right in the drive belt and I put one toggle switch up here to energize it so it doesn't run a regulator, it charges maximum all the time. This PWM uses a lot of juice, and without the alternator charging the battery, you're not going to go very far, and the next thing you know, the battery's going to be dead. So, uh, Panologic PWM that's running my propulsion, you know, they, they can't get wet. They don't need to be out in the weather, so I keep it stuffed back inside of this little shelter, and I keep a, a tarp right over the top of that PWM to keep that uh, so it doesn't go bad. The PWM is a, is a 12 volt 150 amp and what it does is it it throttles the ground depending on when you've turned the rheostat it's throttling the ground so it's either giving it just a little bit of a ground or it's giving it a lot of a ground and that's what gives you your travel speed if you don't know how PWM works. There's only four wires on them. You got two wires that go to the battery, positive and negative. 
you got two wires that go to your motor, positive and negative. And when it when you switch from forward to reverse, it just switches automatically within the PWM, so it's all self-contained. So it really makes it simple when you wanna when you wanna do something like that. Just make sure that you buy a a PWM that's heavy enough to handle the load that you're gonna put on it. And that tarp motor down there, it requires, you know, it can go up to 50 amps, they say. Well, in a surge condition, I run a, I run a 15 amp fuse, and if anything ever goes wrong, it'll blow that fuse. Like if it pulled up and it stalled out against something, I would rather have blow the fuse out than burn up my motor or burn up my PWM. So I put a 15 amp fuse in there, and it, it'll pop the fuse every now and then it'll do that, not very often. I keep an eye on it. I don't get carried away with my travel speed. I'm not in a big hurry. I've only got 18 horsepower. It's not like I got 50 horsepower pulling a thing. But when you're sawing a log like this, it's, you know, 26, 28 inches wide. It takes quite a bit to run that blade through there. So the part that you didn't get to see <clears throat> is my log holders because the log was on here so I'm going to show them to you now. So these things pivot. They pivot up and they pivot down. This is the little bracket that I built that you put on it if the if you got a big uh, the butt end of the logs great big and it's sticking out too far to clear your guide. I put these on here and that way hold your log away from your guide. Once you get a cant, all of these little tabs will hold your cant, your cant slides right up against it and it works real well. So you can take these and move these up and down as you're, as you're uh, changing your cut. These are the little brackets that I made that go on here in a pin. Pin goes through them. Then you kick the bottom end in like this to hold your hold your log. They come off real easy so when you want to load a log on here they work pretty good. So just show you a little uh, something else here. This is my my water off and on. You see it down here spraying on my belt or on my blade there. Turn it off, turn it on, regulate your water however you want. That's my water. This here's my throttle. When you pull it all the way down, it's wide open. You push it up, it idles. I used a, a crank off of a light plant that has a brake in it. So when you crank it up, and I've got my scale here on the side, it tells you what you're cutting. You crank it up, and you lower it down. Depending on what, what you want to cut. I put nylon slides in it where it slides up and down and I left them sharp across the top. The first ones I put on there, it would build up and it would stick. This one here, as it goes up and down, I, I keep dry graphite on there also. When this one goes up and down, it shaves that off as it's going up and down. Really helps quite a bit. My tension adjustment for my blade. I bought these from uh, Cook's sawmill they, they sell all of these little fancy parts that you can buy nice because you can adjust everything the way you want it I mounted my water tank up here on the top but my table's 24 feet long and I built adjusting screws I put railroad ties down and I screwed the plates to railroad ties and then this bolt just sits in that saddle right there so you can crank it up and crank it down so when you go to level your table you got eight points to level on so you can really get your table set up exactly the way you want it to work there's a few things I need to change but uh, so far I've sawed off a lot of lumber with it and it does pretty good. I made this cover on the front. It's got two snaps 
two on the bottom and two on the top and then I put a piano hinge in here so if you undo it you can pull the piano hinge out both sides and take this cover completely off and get in there and work on it without having too much trouble if you stand here and you look at the size of this log and you look at at where it's going and you look at that blade on there it it saws a lot of wood for a homemade piece of piece of whatever you want to call it you know <laughs> but I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing it but I hope you liked the video and if you like it give us a thumbs up and thank you for watching.